so here's the thing, right? I have this giant three kilowatt power bank. So what this is, is 30 100 watt resistors just pissing away energy and um, loading up some like three kilowatt power supplies like that one down there. And that's all nice and good, but I also have this box full of power supplies, which are really nice power supplies, but I really don't do anything with them. So I decided that I'm going to start this YouTube channel and tear down each and every one of these power supplies and basically see what's inside because they're really interesting. It's great teardown material. So first of all, I have to start with a bit of an apology. Um, somebody sent me a large box of super, super awesome power supplies and other various stuff. I think a year and a half ago now, maybe two years ago. Uh, basically, I had a uh, website. I still have a website. Uh, I'll link it down in the description. Uh, where I said, if you have anything you want to send me, send me stuff. And he's been one of two people who ever sent me stuff. And it was super awesome. Anyway, this is one of the power supplies, one of like 12 uh, power supplies in the package. It's an uh, Arch Electronics. 250 watt open frame power supply. This is the pinnacle of power supply design. I have not looked inside this yet, but I'm sure it will be like the highest possible quality. One of the first things we see in this power supply is that the outer box, it's not just plain, uh, plain steel, it's actually high grade stainless steel. It's a stainless steel, like a perforated top and just a regular bent bottom. And this is not just that, it's even better. Uh, it's like three millimeter thick sides and the top plate is like at least a millimeter, probably a millimeter and a half. Uh, really, really solid outside. And this is, and this is usually the first thing they try to cut corners on. Um, cut corners? Whatever. Anyway, let's open it up. Uh, pretty simple construction. Just a couple of uh, Phillips screws, short Phillips screws. It's all still bent. It's not like machined or anything. So I mean, could have, could have make it, made it much better even. Anyway, Arch uh, Arch Electronics Corporation, um, also known as I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure it's also known as Arch Power. And ooh, nice, nice touch, having the the little sticker on top to uh, to prevent. Well, I guess they didn't put it on top of the second cap. Why are there two caps? That's interesting. Uh, let me just uh, get more out. Ooh, evil, evil! They put one of the uh, required uh, screws behind the sticker which means I cannot get it out without voiding warranty, which is, of course, not really an issue. I mean, who cares about warranty? Here we go. Ooh, oh, so nice. So what they did here is the, uh, they have a screw holding back a little, I guess, aluminum bar or brass bar, and they put heat shrink around the bar, even though the uh, transistors are insulated inside so gone through a lot of extra effort this is this is indicative of any high quality power supply um, they don't take any chances they just do all the requisite engineering and make a make an awesome design oh, they've they've done it at at all the possible places they even put some like sticky sticky tape here um, to make sure that this bar doesn't slip away, which is really awesome. Anyway, I took the liberty of removing the power supply from its case uh, off screen. Actually, I had some lunch and then did some other stuff and then came back to this. Um, so first thing 
just to point out, uh, this is kind of interesting. They have they always have this uh, polyethylene uh, insulator to protect the back from like from contacts from the back from contacting the um, uh, the metal base plate. And it's interesting to see that they use double sided tape to uh, put this on. Usually, what you see is that it either has no adhesive ba backing at all, or uh, they fold it around somewhere or, or kind of positively retain it uh, in some other way. Uh, it's rare to see tape added and that's obviously... I'm kind of raving over this uh, power supply because it's, uh, it's so good. Uh, so anyway, here's the power supply. Uh, it's been in a box for two years, so I'm pretty sure that everything is discharged. Um, let me just look around. So it's uh, barren on the back side, it's only uh, metallization. All the components are on the top side. It looks all to be through hole basically, uh, except for the control board. Uh, now, oh, sorry, bumped the camera there. Uh, let's see. So uh, what happens is that the AC comes in here, DC comes out here. Uh, it looks like a lot of contacts, but it's actually just three positive and three negative voltage outputs or uh, three ground outputs, so to speak. Um, so, let's see. First of all, we see a... Uh, you know what? I'll go and zoom in a, little, in a little bit more. All right, I readjusted the camera a bit uh, so we can see it a bit better. Um, first of all, what we see is... Uh, well, we see a lot of things. Uh, we see a... Um, Little, I will just use a pointer here. Um, we see a relay. That's very interesting. What is it switching? Let's see, the relay is about here ish. Seems to be a single inline relay that is switching mains. So this, yeah. Pretty sure it's switching mains. That's interesting. Uh, it's an in and out brand, which I do not immediately recognize. I would expect, to be honest, I would expect something like a... Um, can't think of any names now. I'll put something on screen. Uh, that brand. Uh, otherwise, a complete input protection should contain uh, a fuse. That's there, uh, there's some, some immediate input filtering. This is just probably over line and neutral. Let's see. Ground, line, neutral. Yep. This is just connected over line and neutral to suppress uh, some noise. Um, we have the input capacitor, combo choke, big capacitor, combo choke, small capacitor. Uh, looks like a slightly higher value combo mode choke that goes into the bridge rectifier. Um, this arrangement is the combo mode filtering and then these capacitors on the side, these little blue capacitors, those are the uh, differential mode filters, which are all pretty important for EMC considerations because as the current, the AC current comes in, it gets rectified and put into the uh, bulk capacitor to be used in this DC to DC converter. Um, you get little current spikes. Those current spikes have a lot of high frequency components. Those need to be filtered out because otherwise you get crap on your AC mains. Uh, that's a problem. So another thing that's absolutely necessary is an MOV. Interestingly, they put the MOV after some of the filtering. So this is probably why they have a two-stage uh, common mode filtering. Um, my guess would be this is a pretty small uh, MOV. Uh, by the way, the reason I know it's an MOV is because it's over the line of neutral and it says RV1, i.e. Uh, variable resistor 1. Um, it's pretty small, which leads me to believe that they uh, 
I kind of use the higher impedance of this uh, filtering to reduce the necessary size of this MOV. Otherwise, usually MOVs are placed directly onto the uh, line in the neutral as they come in. Um, because if there's a big voltage spike, you want to suppress it as soon as possible without risking damage of downstream components. Um, other stuff. Let me see. These capacitors, they all seem like high voltage capacitors. Yeah, those are all on the DC side. So there's, there's a kind of interesting... What's this? This... This looks to be a... Um, yeah, this is a uh, PTC resistor, so a um, positive temperature uh, coefficient. This means that inverse current is um, suppressed by this. Uh, as the inverse current co comes in, the resistance of this component goes up and suppresses the inverse current. Anyway, after DC rectification, this is the rectifying bridge, which is a GBU606, so uh, 600 volt 6 amp rated uh, rectifier uh, goes into these uh, film capacitors which are 1k which means uh, 1k picofarad i.e. 1 nanofarad I think not 100% sure uh, 2 in parallel pretty sure it's in yeah it's in parallel um, and then through another common mode choke, and then it's, let me see, yeah, pretty sure, let me see, it goes in there, no, this is not a common mode choke, this is just a straight inductor, obviously you don't need uh, any more common mode filtering there, uh, yeah, basically goes directly into the filter cups. Uh, this is very interesting. These are two capacitors. The first one is obviously an Epson Chemicon. Um, this uh, gray one. It has. Ooh, I see. Okay, so what they did is they have this eighty. 2 microfarad. I have an 82 microfarad Nippon Chemicon and a, a 100 microfarad Burr Brown, i.e. Vichy nowadays. Uh, you can just about make out the typical Burr Brown B there. Uh, why? I mean, obviously, this one is handling higher current. Because this one has the the bigger terminals, this this one is actually tiny. Maybe I don't know. It's an enigma. Apparently, it was necessary. Probably better filtering. I mean, these these have to ha handle uh, the current spikes as the DC to DC converter works. So now comes the interesting part. Um. Jeez. What's going on here? Uh, oh, I see. I made a mistake. Never mind. I uh, completely missed the power factor correction. Obviously, this is a 250 watt power supply, so it needs power factor correction. So uh, this here is the inductor. This is the transistor, and this is the diode. Uh, so this is essentially a boost converter uh, that takes the variable voltage input and boosts it up to uh, the high voltage this is probably at 360 volts in operation um, big big boost converter basically nothing to say here um, they usually run critical mode which means uh, that the current goes to zero but never stays at zero through the inductor uh, this is a good optimization criterion to make a relatively small converter but still have good efficiency. Uh, let me see. Yeah, so it's, it's nothing nothing going on here. And this is probably the controller for that. 
Sorry, I have to look off screen. It's an ST. An ST what? An ST EZ542. I'll put something on screen. I don't I don't recognize this uh, immediately. Um so other stuff to see here. Uh obviously here the switching is going on and it looks like because of all the components that are on this side, looks like this is the only switching transistor on the primary. Uh so one transistor means it cannot be a bridge topology, cannot be LC, uh cannot be a uh, simple forward converter, this has to be a pseudo-resonant um, converter. Has to be, basically. Uh, there are some other one transistor, like, um, what's it called, a self-resonating oscillator stuff, but that doesn't have a uh, uh, dedicated chip or feedback or anything. Uh, this is definitely a um, uh, pseudo-resonant converter. So, we are going to see some snubbers. Uh, let me see. This, these are low value resistors. So these are the current sensing resistors because uh, pseudo resonant converters are current mode converters. So they have to measure current. They cannot use voltage or anything else. Uh, and then this almost certainly is some snubbing. Let me see. It's kind of hard to make out. There's there are some more diodes. There are actually two diodes here. This may just be the low voltage, like the auxiliary supply for the electronics. So the snubbing, like this is a tiny capacitor that probably does something. Oh yeah, I see it now. So here's a diode. It's very hard to see on screen. Sorry about that. I'll try to get better lighting for the next time. There's a diode in here, a resistor in here, tiny capacitor in here, another resistor. And this is, okay, this resistor is very high value, so this is probably a bleeder. Um, but this is definitely the snubbing uh, area. So with a, a pseudo-resonant converter, you have to have some snubbing, because otherwise there could be very high voltage sp spikes during uh, switching. Uh, going on, this is just a transformer it's hmm, it's often very hard to uh, to know what it is uh, I do like I do this for a living I do power supplies for a living so uh, I do know how to uh, decode this stuff it's most likely like a C89 material ferrite core or something um, they used a um, uh, perpendicular core, so the core is like this, instead of like this, standing up like this inductor is. Uh, this is just to get um, get a lower profile. And it's actually a bit worse for your uh, pin out the wires, have a little bit longer to travel um, for your installation. There are all kinds of uh, reasons to do one or the other. Uh, Uh, I'm sorry, there, there's another jump cut. Um, I had to swap out my uh, SD card. Anyway, uh, we were talking about the, the transformer. Uh, I'm not really going to go into that. I could do a whole video about the, these transformers. Um, they do say Lion, which is probably the transformer manufacturer. All these power supply uh, manufacturers uh, it's very rare for them to make their own transformers. Transformers are a very competitive business. Uh, these are almost always outsourced to spec um, to specialized transformer manufacturers. And they use their, their own internal codes, like this code. You can decode them. Um, often, they're like this one. I don't recognize anything in it. It says 246AQF. 250S1A. No, maybe maybe this means like for 250 volts, one amp. Oh, 250 watts, maybe. Yeah, something like that. Usually you can get the core material and uh, 
the insulation parameters from the um, uh, from these numbers like what's this yeah this this one has a similar this one has a 247 AQF 25002A yeah that's that's some 250 watt reference I guess all the magnetics have uh, similar numbers anyway yeah, this is uh, this is going to be uh, like 36 primary windings and then two or three secondary windings, something like that. Uh, box standard for 12 volt power supply. Is this 12 volts? Let me just check real quick. <laughs> yeah, it's 12 volts, 20 amps. Um, so interesting. We have three pin devices here. This means it does synchronous rectification, so it has to have a synchronous rectification controller of some kind. Nope, I was wrong. They're just diodes. So that's a bummer. I uh, was hoping for synchronous rectification. But there's no rectification controller, so that was kind of a dead giveaway, I guess. Anyway, uh, yeah, three big diodes. So they have to do like seven amps each for 20, 21 amps output. Uh, yeah, you wouldn't be able to dissipate that with the TU220. So this is uh, this is a logical layout. Three big TO264s. TO, uh, giant, giant output inductor. Uh, obviously, you needed lots of current. And to have like any inductance, you need lots of wires. Uh, to, have it, to have that at low impedance, obviously. Uh, for DC. It's just an inductor, so this is essentially an LC filter, uh, which is the lossless variant of an RC filter for power. And then Nippon Chemicon KY uh, series. So lots of people, they say like, oh, it, uh, it has to have Nippon Chemicon, otherwise I don't buy it. Or the only good brands are Nippon Chemicon, Rubicon, etc. It's really no use just looking at the brand because Nippon Chemicon, they make cheap capacitors as well like a lot of cheap power supplies they have these they have for instance a Nippon Chemicon primary capacitor this primary capacitor it does nothing it only has to handle ripple currents of a couple hundred milliamps any capacitor can do that um, Nippon Chemicon is very competitive in price in the high voltage range this is where it really counts on the output output capacitors those are the this one's flapping. Hmm, flapping in the breeze. Should have uh, gunked it down. Everything else is gunked down. Anyway, this is where the real current happens. Like, this is where you get very high ripple current and where you need the uh, good qu quality capacitors. So, probably a good choice. Like, KY is the general purpose high current. Um, th there are higher current versions, lower impedance versions, but. This is pretty good. It's only 20 amps output. That's not super high or anything. 250 watts is meh. And then a big uh, big choke just on the output directly. Open choke, so lots of spray EMC coming out of this, but yeah, it's in a, a steel enclosure, so whatever. And then basically nothing else. So that's it. Uh, thanks for watching. Leave your uh, comments in the comment section. I'll try to get better lighting next time. Uh, it's almost impossible to see components on the PCB. All right. See ya. Penis. Oh, whoops. Just a little addendum here. Uh, I forgot to flip over the board for you. Uh, so this is the back side. Kind of interesting to see that they didn't go for complete isolation slots. Uh, they just went with the holes. That's fine, I guess. Uh, but something else they didn't do is they didn't remove the solder mask and it's a bit of a no-no because solder mask um, contaminates a little bit easier. Uh, it's harder to, to maintain a good uh, creepage on solder mask. So if you leave on the solder mask, just use complete slots. I, I get it, they, they want to have better, better strength, structural strength, but meh, meh. Also, uh, they left out the strips on the solder mask here. Um, but this was flow soldered like with a high-end process, so it didn't leave a lot of solder behind. So the actual current ca capacity increase with these little lines is mm, moderate at best, like 
this will only increase it like 10 or 20 percent. Uh, that's meh, meh, meh. Anyway, bye.